April and Wayne Show app is now available on Google Play for Android. And donate to help the ministry at aprilandwayneshow.com. There is an acting style that is popular in Hollywood called method acting. Method acting is when an actor literally becomes separated from him or herself and attempts to become fully absorbed into the character they are playing. Method actors completely lose their identity in their role. Method actors can't help but to stay in character on and off the scene. They never go out of character during the entire filming because they have become the character. But there is a difference between the kind of acting when you pretend to be someone else and the type of acting where the goal is to become someone else. This method of acting in truth is not really acting, but they are having spirits act through them. They conjure these spirits by heavy meditating on their imaginations so that they will become the character, but they are really becoming vessels for demonic spirits. Nicolas Cage, a popular method actor, calls his type of method acting Novu Shamanic or New Shaman. Shamans are people who contact and see into the spirit world through various rituals. They also invite demonic spirits to come into them. In an interview, Nicolas Cage said he reads the book The Way of the Actor by Brian Bates. It states that all actors are modern day shamans and he learned that ancient shamans would use masks or rocks or some sort of magical object that had power to it to invoke spirits. During a web chat for Empire Online, Nicolas Cage describes how he used this method to play the character Ghost Rider. He said, it occurred to me because I was doing a character as the spirit of vengeance, I could use these techniques. I would paint my face with black and white makeup to look like an Afro-Caribbean icon called Baron Samedi or an Afro-New Orleans icon who is also called Baron Saturday. He is a spirit of death and I would put black contact lenses in my eyes so that you could see no white and no pupil. So I would look more like a skull or a white shark on attack. On my costume, my leather jacket, I was sew in ancient thousands of years old Egyptian relics and gather bits of tourmaline and ox and would stuff them in my pocket to gather these energies together and shock my imagination into believing that I was augmented in some way by them or in contact with ancient ghosts. I would walk on a set looking like this, loaded with all these magical trinkets. And I wouldn't say a word to my co-stars or crew or directors. I saw the fear in their eyes, and it was like oxygen to a forest fire. I believed I was the ghost rider. In, the, in this movie, you uh, literally are fighting an inner demon, this, this hell beast that lives within you. And I'm kind of curious, it looks like it takes a lot of energy just to be able to bring that out physically performing it what was it like kind of working yourself up to that energy level to kind of have this fire burning inside of you uh, what I like to sometimes do is go outside the box and find something that's mm. uh, more than natural abstract uh, larger than life avant-garde in some way um, and you can do it in all sorts of art forms you can do it in painting you can do it in music why can't you do it in, in film acting it, I, I read that you actually kind of painted your face and gun to the character of Ghost Rider, even though we don't see your face because you're a flaming skull on screen, right. but that you took efforts to try and inhabit that character physically. Is that part of like getting to that point, that energy point for you? Yeah, well what happens is when you make a decision to use the outside to work in, not only does it give you a kind of power, not unlike a child on Halloween, it also instills fear in your co-stars and the people around you, and you see that in their eyes, and then, then you don't have to act, because you suddenly get power from their fear. Sure. So are you eating cookies at the crafty table, and like all the crew is scared of you because you're, you look like Ghost Rider all I'm, the time? I'm not eating cookies <laughs> at the crafty table. I go to the set. And I go to my trailer. Gotcha. Oh, so you're you're kind of in the zone the whole time. Right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And I know that you're a big comic book buff. Is that is that true? You're kind of a comic book fan for a long time. I used to read many comics, especially as an eight-year-old, and Ghost Rider was one of them. Comic books are a uniquely American invention that have really changed the world. It's In my opinion, they're no different than Greek myths or Norse myths or Grimm's fairy tales. And, they give people a kind of identity which gives them power in some way. I've met cops who actually wear Superman and Batman t-shirts underneath their uniforms hmm. to give them power. 
Heath Ledger was also a method actor and showed signs of demonic possession while playing the Joker, a very dark, psychotic, and murderous demonic character from Batman comics for the film The Dark Knight. My one experience with Heath um, on the film was our scene together in the hospital bed, which is really my only scene with him. And I was in the hospital bed that day and I thought, well, I don't really have any lines. What am I gonna do? And I had no idea what was gonna happen. And so I was, got in the bed and they were lighting and Chris was walking around and doing things and the Heath came around and Heath was always in character. So he would come around and you know be talking to himself in the corner <laughs> like this. And then he would come up, I was laying there and I was watching him the whole time. And he came up and would walk around me like this. <laughs> and I would watch him and I would watch him. He'd walk around the hospital bed like this. I'd watch him, didn't say anything for maybe an hour. He would walk around. <laughs> And then we'd watch him, and then he'd start saying his lines. And I would watch him, boom, watch him come around the bed like this. And then all of a sudden, my hand would go up like this, and he capped, caught my hand. So we just went through this organic process of developing this scene, which was really nothing. In order to inhabit his character, Ledger spent almost a month locked up in a hotel and writing in a diary, as if he were truly the Joker. So this was the diary. Pour se fondre dans son rôle, il s'est cloîtré dans une chambre d'hôtel pendant des semaines. C'était tout lui. But Ledger told New York Times that he had trouble sleeping while portraying the Joker, and that last week I probably slept an average of two hours a night. Ledger seemed to have been tormented by these demons, as he told the Times. I couldn't stop thinking. My body was exhausted and my mind was still going. He went on to state that he took drugs, which would quell the unrest for only an hour. And actor Shirley MacLaine, who spoke much about the new age and channeling spirits for acting said, I had seen so many channels and mediums over the past few years, I decided I would apply the same thing to show business. I simply channeled a character that we created. This time, I allowed the character to inhabit me. I trusted the magic would work. She even joked about an incident where she was acting a scene with Jack Nicholson, who was also known to be a method actor, and two voices spoke out of him simultaneously. And then we launched into the first take, and two voices came out of you. Do you remember this? Two voices, and they were, they were simultaneous words, but they were two levels of sound. And I looked over at you, you were amazed, I was amazed, and you said, well, sure. Cheryl, I'm, I'm many different people. <laughs> I said, no, Jack, you're channeling. But Jack Nicholson must have known how hard it was to deal with the fierce spirit of Joker and said he warns Ledger after finding out the news of his death. Jack, Jack any comments Jack. on Heath Ledger's death? About what? Heath Ledger, the actor, he died in New York. Overdose. Overdose. He died in New York. Apparently. Yeah. I warned him. <laughs> and unfortunately, Robin Williams acknowledged that he had opened himself up to demonic powers that aided him on stage. In an interview, Williams stated that, yeah, literally, it's like possession. All of a sudden, you're in. And because it's in front of a live audience, you just get this energy that just starts going. But there's also that thing, it is possession. In the old days, you'd be burned for it. But there is something empowering about it. It is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where you really become this other force. Maybe that's why I don't need to play evil characters in movies. Because sometimes on stage, you can cross that line and come back. That's what people can get as dark as they can in comedy. Talking about outrageous stuff and somehow come out on the other side. That's one place where you really want to push it. Many actors learn of conjuring demons for roles because they have sold their souls to Satan. And the same thing too, if you, if, in the mythology, if you could sell your soul to the devil, this could happen to you. I think that was the... Well, in, a, in an interesting way, uh, Ghost Rider is more real if you go for that sort of thing in that he deals between the spiritual and the material. And if you have an open mind, anything is possible. 
The Bible says that all sorcerers shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. But if you are watching this and have not given your life to Jesus and don't repent of your sins and turn away from them, you are also in danger of hellfire. There are scenes in the Ghost Rider films that simulates what happens to your soul in hell when dying without Christ. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In hell, your spiritual body will be burned with everlasting fire. You'll be burned down to skeleton form, only to have your flesh grow back to be consumed again. This is everlasting recurring fire. In the film, it looks as though Nicolas Cage is having fun, but in hell, the souls will be tormented and crying, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For those who want to be saved, here is a prayer of repentance for salvation. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I turn my back on my sins, and I renounce every spirit that has me bound. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. Come into my heart and be my savior. After getting saved, begin reading your Bible daily and pray every day by humbling yourself on your knees before the Lord privately to grow in your walk with the Lord. 